So, on this video, I'm going to be converting from analog to digital. I ordered the Walk Snail Avatar V2, just came from GetFPV, and I've collected all the necessary tools I'm going to need to do this upgrade. I got my diagram for my uh, Luminaire Lux, which is supposed to support digital, and Time to open the package. This is a pretty box. There's two boxes taped together. very carefully <laughs> separate these packages next I'm gonna do away with the funny stuff and bring out the real tools so you've seen unboxing videos of this product, but one thing that I didn't actually see anyone do was measure the cable that goes from the camera to the VTX. And they say it's 140 millimeters, that's kind of long. I don't know if it was a typo or not. When I look at other video, it looks shorter than 140 millimeters so I want to have a look because this is long so it's where my camera's going to be I don't think I have enough room in the stack I'm not sure so I might put the VTX back here so let's have a look of course it's uh, nicely packaged Okay, very gently. Okay, it's more like 120 millimeters. Let's see what I have at 120. Okay, maybe I was wrong about 140. 120 will work on this. Well, maybe. If I have to scooch around anything, I might have a problem. Yeah, should be okay. So the cable comes right out the middle of this, which I was kind of surprised. And my mounting configuration is in the middle. So I'm hoping that high or low is going to give me the clearance I need to mount this. I can try to match it up now, but I'm better off just taking the thing apart and seeing how it's going to go in there. Alright, so I can make some room. The camera all camera comes off, the VTX comes off, and uh, all the wiring through the, um, the flight controller comes off. Uh, to get the OSD on, you, of course you go in and out of the flight controller between the video camera and the VTX. With this here, you got the one cable. So I'm assuming that the heads up display gets imposed uh, using the digital um, serial transmit and receive connection. Fingers crossed. That's all I got for right now. All right, I just checked on mine. And this is supposed to be 140. It's 120 from here to here. So, what could they be talking about? Well, it's 140 
if you include the camera and the end of the lens. It's not what I was looking for. So, crossing my fingers, this is going to work for me. So, these are your connections into the flight controller. It's a wiring harness with just uh, uh, ends that need to be soldered on here. My um, flight controller, the Luminar Lux H7, it has a um, JSTSH connector for video. And RX3 is already pre was already pre-designated for that. It's got 9 volts ground and then your transmit and receive. So UART3 was for some reason uh, picked for this. So I chose not to use it when I originally built it. There are plenty of um, UARTs on this. So it was easy enough to not use that one. But because there is a jack... I think I'm going to um, use a wiring kit with terminals and I'm going to crimp terminals on so I'm going to plug it in both ends. Not necessary because this end has a plug on it but because they provided it and I just want to try it out I'm going to uh, I'm going to make up pins on the ends and use a connector. Uh, right now I wanted to talk to you about the screws and the holes. You might want to find out how many turns the screw goes in here before you bottom out so that you can gauge what length screw is going to work. So the dilemma is it's very shallow so if you go really short you might only get one turn of the screw and that might end up getting ripped out and then it's going to mess up the threads. Um, I'm going to go for the greatest number of turns without the screw bottoming it out. Bottoming out. That's either going to uh, be the native screw or a longer screw with a washer or just a longer screw. I'm not too sure what the best combination is. I got two turns out of this. This is like two and three quarters to three turns out of it uh, to get it to bottom out. So this is good enough for two turns. Um, I would have liked three full turns on it, but I don't think um, I'm going to be able to do that without a real pain in the butt. Alright, that's it for right now. So I abandoned my idea of putting JSTSH pins on the other end. Um, I couldn't be certain that the crimp was good enough. The crimpers that I have are okay in a pinch but I didn't want to trust a video on it so luckily I remembered that I had a kit two kits one kit has JSTSH on one end and Molex on the other then I had another kit that had JSTSH on both ends so that's a kit I used because that's what this is and that's what the flight controller had too so the harness is made up I just had to pick the wires the correct length and then push them into brand new connectors. And here's the VTX end. And this one is the um, flight controller. My wire route from the VTX to the camera just makes it. Right here, this black wire going right along and it's not taut. It has maybe one or two millimeters of slack in it. This is almost made for this frame. Uh, if I, I don't know how to put a disclaimer in, but I wish you lots of luck. I hope it fits yours if you have a longer frame. Uh, I do have this, which I was kind of enjoyed putting on. Programmable LEDs. I had them flashing white in case I wanted to take it up in the evening and they were back here so I have to figure out where to put them if I put them back on at all so that's it for right now
So here's what I've done so far. I screwed this down using uh, that screw pattern right there. And it's touching the carbon fiber. So it'll probably be better that way to transfer the heat into the frame. Uh, I 3D printed these two brackets and they're up a little bit so air can get under there and they're not covering the whole heat sink. I'm going to put this pretty much miracle tape on these two rails brackets and they're going to stick to this. So that'll hold my lights in place, my antenna. I 3D printed this to stick out a little bit to give myself some room to put something back there, maybe some hot glue or a tie wrap or both to hold this in place. Maybe a little something on the outside and also to give it a little room because it's a little long and I tried not to bend that too sharp. Um, because this board is as absolutely as long as I could make it to get as many LEDs on there, I had to notch this here in the back, this 3D printed part, almost to the metal posts. And uh, that allowed that to fit. So there's some uh, custom work done here to get this thing so I can have uh, my cake and eat it too. I also left all the original connections on here. Uh, in case something happens right now and then I can just go back to analog. But two interesting things occurred to me while I was doing this build. So I put this in, I put that in, and then I have these wires. I'm like, wait a minute. How's this going to get the OSD data from the flight controller? I know I have a communication line there, but guess what? the communication line will put the LSD information on the screen so you're not inter you're not intercepting the camera feed and and overlaying something from the flight controller and then sending both together out to the video transmitter with a digital system it's a straight line but you're digitally imposing the flight um, the flight data on top of your output so that's awesome. Besides um, that benefit, you don't have all these extra wires. I have wires from, I had wires from my camera and the flight controller. There was an audio wire that I had to pass through to the transmitter. And then it came out of the flight controller, of course, and went into the video transmitter. So how to pass those wires around, under, over. I have an ESC here. 4 and one underneath, and uh, you're really not supposed to keep uh, to allow unnecessary wires to go close to that because it creates a lot of noise. So I took a, a lot of stuff across the top of my flight controller. So this is working out pretty good. Um, I have iNav on here. I had to upgrade to 6.1 because iNav 6 is the first revision that will support this kind of connection and it's called a display port so there's information online about how to set that up and in, in iNav all you have to do is enable the UART I connected this to 3 because that's what UART is assigned to this jack and um, so you turn that on you don't have to turn on MSP um, I think it's called MSP uh, as you do in Betaflight you don't have to do that in iNav and, Again, you can find that on YouTube. So there's, oh, there's three things you have to do. Um, you set the um, the port to display port, the, the um, communication port. Then you go in, and what was the third thing? Maybe not. So the second thing you do is you go into the OSD menu, and then you pick the, um, the walk snail from the list of digital connections you have. So yeah, that little bit of a brain fart I'm leaving in. I'm not editing it out. Forget it. Anyway, uh, I'm going to see if I can get this to go together without a lot of cursing. It's working. 
going to see if I can show you the goggle screen when there's no video. Now I'm going to power it up. So nothing in the goggles yet. Actually I have some stats on the screen now. And now my picture just popped up. So it takes a second for it to bring the image up. Of course you can't judge quality by this, but I have some uh, iNav stats on there along with the stats that come with the, uh, the HD video system. Final assembly. Oops. And I'm done. Oh, by the way, this thing is, I don't know if it's a combination between the two fans, but it's kind of making a high-pitched whine. The VTX was running cool when I first powered it up, but when I walked away, um, it got pretty hot. So I think what it did was boosted the signal. Boosted that power, I'm sorry. No, it's getting warm now, so yeah, it's gonna run pretty hot if there's no um if there's no props cooling it. Alright, I think that'll do it for now. Now I get to remove all of these camera wires from the old camera system. I'm gonna start from the deep part of the board and work my way towards the edge. Be nice to lose all of the solder in these holes because lead is heavy. But that's not going to happen. Alright. This is a ground wire. Ground wires take a little extra heat. wire here. Now we got another ground wire, the video ground wire. you can do it. Here we go. Starting to melt. There we go. That harness is done. And here's our camera. That harness was for the VTX. Look at all this good stuff on taken off of here. Making for a neater install. I really should have a better tin on the soldering iron. It would melt the solder better. But I don't want to do cameras interrupt us. There we go. There's a lot of um, copper circuit traces connected to ground wires. That's why it takes longer to heat up a ground wire because um, 
the heat gets sucked into the board, it has to heat all that metal up before it gets hot enough at the source. Now, they're a little bit ugly, but I'm leaving them. It's not going to hurt anything. So it's time to reassemble it. So I just pushed this through, this antenna through. It's a pretty tight fit. It's a tiny bit crooked. So I'm going to use this tacky glue. I've used it on airplanes and it kind of stays sticky, holds pretty good. So if I have to pull it off, I'll be able to. Alright, so I'm finished. I updated iNav on here. Restored my uh, original custom changes from 5.1 into 6.1. Everything looked okay. With this flight controller, I'm always left with uh, 50 I2C errors. I'm guessing they're not supporting the CAN bus or something like that. So, over here is what I took off. I don't need it anymore. Also, some wiring harnesses. I forgot to lay them here. Whatever. And I'm just going to power it up real quick. And I still have my lights going on in there. And what I did with the USB port, I put it right there. I connect, ran the wires through internally in a safe location. And I plugged it in here. And I'm just really hoping that I don't have a uh, loose prop broken prop running into these wires. It's going to be a real pain in the butt to fix that. So, I'm done. Can't wait to try it. Thanks for watching.